All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we got none other than the one, the only, the legendary Cassidy right here, right now on the line. How you doing this evening? How you feeling? How you feeling? I am doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, hope everything is all well out there with you during this terrible pandemic. Yeah, everything is beautiful. So I have to ask you, Cassidy, from the beginning, man, what made you decide to get in, get into the music industry? Um, I was born in the hip hop game. My mom and my dad rapped before I was born. So when they was making me, they both was writing rap. So I was born into it. Uh, did did you, did you know just being born into that that you were gonna do it, or like is this something that came out came to you uh, like later on in life? Well, I fell in love with hip hop um, when I was born. I mean, for as far as I can remember back, I always loved hip hop, but. I decided that I was going to actually become a rapper in the fourth grade. Um, I was in the after-school program, fire prevention, after-school program, and um, the teacher put me on the spot and told me to write a rap about the class. So that's when I wrote my real first rap. I said it for the class, and they went crazy. The response that I got from just thinking that something and writing it down made me want to be a rapper and wanted to be the best. So I was still in the fourth grade and before I wanted to um, get in the industry because it was like a big business and people had jewelry and cars and I was paying bills. I didn't really even know nothing about that. I just wanted the rap to be the best lyric. And also in the year 2002, you signed a major record deal with Rough Riders Records and of course uh, Full Surface Records as well. Can you tell us a story behind that, that particular record deal? Um, my first record deal, I signed it in 1999. I was uh, 17, and I signed it with Rough Riders and the three-man group, the Arsene Family, with Shiz, Nancy, and Kyle Akbar. Um, I was real buzzing in my city. I had a, a big buzz. I was battling a lot on, on winning radio competitions, so a lot of people was coming to the city asking about me and looking for me and um, presenting opportunities. But I met TD, that Swiss Beach father. Um, he was my manager at the time. He took me, um, well, he wasn't my manager yet, but when I met him, he brought me out to New York. And um, his brothers were the CEOs of Rough Riders. So I met them, and um, they signed me early. And that's how I was able to meet Swiss Beach. He was a big producer over there at Rough Riders at the time. So that's how we developed our relationship. Eventually, he grew, got even bigger, and wanted to start his own production company. And he needed an artist, so he talked with me, talked it over with me and my management. And, but he wanted me as a solo artist. I was in the three-man group when I was signed to Rough Riders, but he wanted to work with me as a solo artist. So that's how we got together. Um, not too long after we started working together, I went and got a, a artist deal with G Records, Clive Davis. And that's how I was able to come out with all of the music that y'all know that I released. And that was actually my next question with Swizz Beats, man. But I do have to say, you um, you actually, you and Swizz Beats, Beats put together some phenomenal records together, man. Phenomenal. Uh, do you think down the road, uh, yourself and Swizz Beats might actually get back together for one more go-around? Hello, Cassidy? Oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, what I was saying was with uh, Swizz Beats, do you think uh, yourself and Swizz Beats might get together for one more go-around? Um, yeah, actually, we got some new music done that's unreleased, but uh, um, I'm not sure. I mean, he's a busy guy. I'm not sure he's too focused on music at the time. I'm super focused on music at the time, but I'm not sure if he is. He's got a lot of other things going on. But, you know, that's my family and my brother, so whenever he come back around and he's ready to work, he know that I'm a phone call away, so you never know. Most definitely, just got to keep your eyes peeled. And also, in March 2004, you released your studio album called Split Personality that actually became certified gold. I have to ask you, what's the inspiration behind that record, and how does it feel just knowing that particular record actually uh, sold five 500,000 units? Um, I, I, I gotta expect that this date is, um, and then sold a lot more because it's 
continue in the trail and stream all the way up to this day. But it did feel good. That was my first project. Um, so to get a plaque and recognition for my first project, it felt good. It was a good thing. But I always, like I told you, I always wanted the rap to be the best in the world. So it's artists that sold a lot more records than that. And I feel like I'm capable of doing more than those type of artists. So um, I always just knew that I could do more and better and just have more to do. So I wasn't like content or was ready to kick my feet up. I knew I still had a lot more work to do. And also, aside from your music uh, stuff there, in the, in the year 2007, you were actually in the movie alongside Denzel Washington called American Gangster. I have to ask you, what was it like working on that particular film, and how did you land that role? I wasn't in the movie American Gangster. Oh, you weren't? I wasn't in that movie. No, I did a couple movies. I was in the movie Next Day Air um, with Mo's Death and Mike Epps. Uh, it was a lot of big people in that movie. I was in a few movies, but I wasn't in um, uh, my, uh, Denzel movie. I have, I have to say, IMDB uh, <laughs> tends to lie sometimes. Uh, my apologies on that, Cassidy. No problem. And also, in uh, 07, um, uh, you signed a deal as uh, the new face for uh, Lot 29's fall clothing line. Can you tell us a bit more about that story and how did that come to be for you? Um, at the time, um, I was really high. I had a lot of hot records out, and they was looking for ways to, you know, um, get their clothes lit, get more clothes sold. So, so um, I signed the endorsement deal with them. It was good because they invested some money. I actually had a billboard in Times Square. This one, magazines was popping more, so I got a lot of magazine promotion and things like that. And it was alongside the same time I was putting out good music, so um, at the time, it was a good situation. Are you still associated with that uh, particular uh, clothing line, or did you guys part ways uh, since then? Yeah, that was for a limited time only. Um, it was just a limited time that I was just going to um, promote that company. Now I have my own clothing line. Everybody that's tuned in, y'all can go to my website. It's www.catcityhustler.com. That's B-A-H-U-S-T-L-A. All my merchandise is up there. We got snapbacks, dad hats, hoodies, jackets, T-shirts. We even got Corona masks. So it's all available. Go up there and look at, at the uh, merchandise that I got available. Everybody that's tuned in. Do you guys ship worldwide as well, or is it just strictly what within North America? Worldwide. And also, in 2013, you released a biography called, actually, Behind Bars, the Unauthorized uh, Biography of Cassidy. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about that project, and also, where can our listeners actually uh, buy themselves a copy or stream it? Um, actually, it was an issue with me and the company that was releasing that so it never was officially released so I'm still working on my autobiography so it hasn't been officially released yet and also in the year 2012 um, I noticed you remade a uh, South Korean singer's uh, hit song Gang G Gangnam Style under the name Condom Style I have to ask you what made you decide to remake that song at that current time um I was looking on the internet and I seen how many views the original song got. And um, I wasn't familiar with the song at first, but people was telling me about it, so I looked at it and I viewed it. And I thought it was a funny song. But because it was getting so much attention, um, when I heard the song, I just started flipping it and having fun and freestyling to it. And that just came to me. It was like a little freestyle quick thing, me having fun. And I just decided to put it together. It was really like a spoof, kind of like what a lot of people do on social media now. But it was a little before its time, so people ain't understand it. And, um, but when I put it out, it actually got a lot of attention. And the condom company reached out to me. They endorsed the song, and um, a lot of people felt the song. So it just was a freestyle that I did just playing around, but it got a lot of success. So you never know. You know, what could do what? That's why you got to just constantly put in work. 
And that's true, you know what I mean? Just a random freestyle of a song uh, landed you an endorsement deal and actually put some money in your pocket. So I don't think at that current time you're gonna be, you're complaining there. Sure, for sure. And this may be songs that I might have believed in more or might have put real time in it and it was serious about that I might have released. And it might not have made me as much money as that freestyle me playing around, you know? And also, you are currently signed to Mayhem Music uh, uh, Mayhem Music Record Label. I have to ask you, how did that deal come to be for you, and what is it actually like being signed under that particular label? Um, actually, that's my production company. Um, I own it, I run it, so it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I have full control, um, full creative control, so I'm able to go in any direction that I want to go in at any given time. And if I see any type of success, I'm able to reap the benefits. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, I have a lot of dope artists, a lot of dope music that we've been releasing, so it feels good. I'm excited. And I have to ask this, going back a little bit, um, you were also a uh, battle rapper in the late 90s, and then you, obviously you went to become a hip-hop artist. Um, what made you decide to actually transition from battle battle rapper to, a, to just a normal MC? Um, well, back in the day when I was battle rapping, um, it wasn't a business yet. Nobody was making money off of it. There wasn't any battle leagues created yet. So battling was just a platform people used to get known in order to get in the industry. So once I got a record deal and got in the industry, I didn't feel the need to battle anymore. And I told people that I wasn't going to come back to battle rap until they needed to grow and they was able to give me a quarter million dollars. So... Um, at that time, people didn't believe Battle Rat would ever grow big enough for me to be able to get that type of money. But I knew the energy that was wrapped around Battle Rat, and I knew what it was going to do. So now you see leagues are able to get those type of budgets up now because it's, it's a lot of attention around Battle Rat because it grew. But I believed in it, like you said, since the late 90s. And I knew, I knew what Battle Rat was. It was like my favorite part of rap. And I knew the energy and being competitive, that's what people love. That's why sports is so big, basketball, boxing, UFC, um, tennis. Anything where people being competitive and going mad at the world love it. And that's why they love battle rap so much. So that's the reason why I got into it, because that's the reason why I had stopped going at that point, because I started making music. And also, since this COVID-19 uh, situation has uh, took over the world, I noticed a lot of individuals are taken to IG to uh, to do battle raps and whatnot. Is there anybody you have in mind that you would actually like to like IG battle if that's something you're interested in? Um, it was a thought that came to my mind. I actually uh, be having um, meetings with um phone conversations and conference calls with the owners of all of the battle leagues. So they've been discussing it with me because they know I'm the energy. But um, the type of money that I demand the battle, they're not going to be able, able to cover it with just an online YouTube Instagram battle. Like in order to book me, you need venues, you need to be able to sell tickets, sell pay-per-views and things like that. So I doubt, I doubt you'll see me doing that type of battle, but... It's good for the culture, and I'm excited, and I definitely be tuned in. Most definitely, I gotta say, anybody that battles you, Cassidy, I I, I would genuinely be scared for them because you'd you'd tear them apart. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. And also, uh, you have some new music coming out as well, called "The Energy" and "So High." Can you tell us a bit more about that, and also what when can we expect those to drop? I have a whole project called The Energy. Um, I have 30 records done now. I have one more session. I have uh, five more records to record, and then I'll be finished. Um, the project is crazy. I feel the best about this music. I mean, I feel better about this music than I ever fuck about any of the music that I ever talked in my life. Um, it's a well-rounded project, the production. The, the concepts, the bars, even the ad libs, just everything that's about the project is dope. And I can't wait till the world hear it. I'm excited. 
Most definitely. Do you have an estimated release date for that as well, or or is it currently up in the air? Um, I have the, the song, the energy that you're talking about, and the other song, so high, are records that's on the whole project. But it's a whole project, a whole uh, album worth for records, and it's, it's, it's crazy. It's the best project that I ever put together. I'm in the best stage. I feel better than I ever felt, and I'm making the best music. So that's why I'm so excited, and I can't wait. And this day and age is not good to really set a date, like back in the day, when we used to set dates ahead of time and try to meet the date. Nowadays, um, you can drop an unexpected album out of nowhere, and sometimes the anticipation um, um, might make it die out, so sometimes you don't want to just give a date. So I'm just letting you know that the music is done. You know what I mean? And once it's done, I'm going to start packaging it up, narrowing it down, and doing everything I need to do to get it out. So you can expect it real, real soon. And also, directly after this interview, I'm going to be playing uh, one of your songs here on the radio station called Innocent. I was wondering if you tell our listeners a bit more about that song. That way they can wrap their head around the lyrics when they actually hear it. What song you said you're going to play? Uh, Innocent. Innocent? Uh, yes. Um, in the, um, well, if you're talking about um, Innocent Man is a record that I did on my Bars album. It was after I came out out of jail. Um, I was falsely accused of, of a crime, and I was in jail facing life without the possibility. So when I came home, I did a record called Innocent Man that let people know that I was innocent of the crime. And, I, and that, that actually is a song I'm actually going to play after our interview. And I do want to say, Cassidy, I'm glad you're out. I'm glad you're still putting out music for fans, not only like myself, but our listeners, man. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see that you uh, beat that case, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you. And so, Cassidy, this is the time in the interview that I just uh, have the individual that comes on to just to actually be able to promote anything else that they actually have going on that I might have missed. Uh, do you have any other projects, um, anything else you want to promote? We still have you here on the air. Um, well, the last project that I released is called Numbers. It was uh, 14 records. And then for the next 14 days after that, I released a single every day. So all together is 28 records, and that new music is on all platforms. Um, it's a um, EP that I'm putting together called Bars and Beats. I'm producing 100% of it and writing 100% of it. I released 11 records from off of that project already that's on all platforms that people can listen to. Um, everybody tune then follow me on social media. My social media is Cassidy underscore Larceny. That's L-A-R-S-I-N-Y. Blue check, I'm verified. On my Instagram, I'm always releasing new music. I actually, this interview, released um, a little snippet of a new song that's coming out for what it was. It's talking about how the hood used to be and how it changed up so much. So I'm always in new music, so follow me on social media. And like I said earlier, everybody tune into the webpage, www.cassidythehustler.com, to see all of the merchandise on my new videos. And so, Cassidy, this is actually the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the station, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And if you can, drop your social media handles one more time. That way our listeners can shoot you a follow if they're not already doing so. It's Cassidy underscore Larson. That's L-A-R-S-I-N-Y. I got to say, Cassidy, uh, thank you so much for providing myself and myself, and not only myself, sorry, but our listeners with your time. It was an absolute honor, man. Uh, thank you so much for the years of amazing hip-hop and many more years to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, and I can't wait till we do this again. Hopefully, we can get on the phone real soon and talk, talk more. Most definitely. Um, well, I'll most definitely hit up MJ when your new project drops, and we'll set something up for sure. Salute. Salute.